On this presentation will be some very old and light drawings of fire engines that Aaron Fox designed but did not build. I hope they will be visible in this production. But first I want to discuss what is probably the most unique Aaron Fox still in existence. It's the one-of-a-kind Fairview New York Quint. The rig has a piston pump, an electric controlled aerial ladder, ground ladders, booster tank, hose, and searchlights powered by the generator that powered the aerial ladder, a self-contained fire department. What may not be known by many people is that originally Charles Fox wanted to build a truck as a tractor trailer. Piston pump on the tractor, which could leave the trailer in front of the fire building and the tractor with the pump on it go to the hydrant and pump water. It was quickly realized that the trailer itself did not have the weight or stability to support the aerial ladder in operation off the side of the trailer. Well quickly another idea was born. A front mount piston pump, rear mount aerial ladder. Here's a drawing of it. Surprisingly, the wheelbase was not much longer than that of the larger piston pumpers. For whatever reason, this design was not chosen, but one has to wonder if this was produced, would it have led the way for many rear mount piston pumpers for other fire departments? Uh, today, rear mounts are probably the most common aerial ladders built. Most Air and Spock's aerials were raised with compressed air stored in tanks under the aerial ladder. Air and Spock's built aerials for San Francisco that were hoisted with springs and controlled electrically and for FDNY which used springs to hoist the aerials. I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to tiller FDNY's last aerial when I was in motor pump operator school in 1969. New York City never ordered any more of the spring hoisted aerials they were kicked off with some 40,000 pounds of spring pressure. The springs for them were made by a company that made springs for railroad trains. Aaron Fox lost a lot of money on the design, tooling, and production of these aerials. Most of these drawings were made in the 1930s. Texaco had a facility in Hooven, Ohio, near Cincinnati, and another one in Georgetown, Kentucky. They were apparently interested in purchasing Aaron Fox, and Aaron Fox was interested in building apparatus for them. Here's a couple drawings of the rigs designed for Texaco. There were several designs, open and closed cabs with booster equipment or chemical tanks. They apparently never bought the rigs, but many years later, Ertl a toy manufacturer produced what was a very similar looking rig with the swept fenders and the Texaco sign on it. Lancaster, Pennsylvania, already Aaron Fox customers, were interested in Aaron Foxes with six man seating. Aaron Fox drew up a couple designs for either piston or centrifugal pumpers. Seems they would have had two separate booster tanks and an aisle up the center of the hose bed to access the rear facing seats. Aaron Fox was a relatively small company building about 1500 pieces of apparatus but led the way with many innovations. Booster tanks which eliminated dangerous use of it, acid used in chemical tanks and could provide an uninterrupted flow of water through the booster hose. Ladder apparatus with double banks of ground ladders which lowered the center of gravity and increased ladder carrying capacity. Charles Fox designed the hydrostat. 
a valve to simplify testing fire apparatus. Charles Fox was in favor of changing nozzle sizes from fractional to caliber. If you had a 25 caliber nozzle and wanted to double your gallonage, you would double your caliber. The idea never took off. Today, many fire engines have flow meters. Kurt Nepper invented and patented an early fire pump governor that controlled engine speed up and down to maintain pump pressure. Most new fire trucks today have governors on them. In the 1920s, Aaron Fox built a hybrid for Gloucester, Massachusetts. A gasoline engine drove a generator that powered electric motors on the wheels. Out front was the reliable piston pump. Top speed was 20 miles per hour. Here are a few drawings for crash trucks. Lunkin Airport was Cincinnati's airport. It was owned by the Lunkenheimer family who made Lunkenheimer valves and the like. Uh, Aaron Fox purchased a lot of their valves and related or relief valves and equipment like that. In 1933, when these drawings were made, the city of Cincinnati had just taken over the airport. That is where American Airlines started. The airport is still in operation today and it's, it's interesting. The, Art Deco buildings that are still in use there. These drawings all showed an angle of approach and an angle of departure and all the rigs had folding back steps which makes one think they were designed to be able to be driven off runways where possibly a plane would have ended up if it had a problem. I thank you for bearing with me. I'm not a public speaker, but I enjoy sharing what I know about Ernst Fox. After the Navy, I lived with Kurt and Donnie Nepper for a few months, and it was a great experience. We'd work on fire trucks in the shop all day and talk fire engines at night. I was not an employee, but Kurt Morton paid me with shared stories and material, much of which was used tonight. As a father, I started early trying to teach my son about Aaron's Fox fire engine. Jim, now a firefighter in FDNY, has assisted me on all my past presentations as well as this one. I sit and wonder, what if they had built these rigs? Would they have taken off and would have Aaron's Fox grown as American LaFrance did? This is an early American LaFrance JOX area ladder. If anyone has the opportunity to visit Cincinnati, they should try to visit some of these sites. This is the Aaron's Fox Condominiums, which is actually the Aaron's Fire Engine Factory. This is the Aaron's Fox Factory on Alfred Street. It's now a self-storage facility. A couple of years ago, we were given the opportunity to take a tour of the inside, and it's interesting to walk around and see what's left of the Aaron's Fox facility. The courtyard where they test the hoist machinery is still up in the ceiling. There's still uh, cranes and the like that ran around on the ceiling to, to build the steam fire engines. In downtown Cincinnati is the Cincinnati Fire Museum, which naturally has many artifacts and a couple trucks and I believe one steamer that were built by Aaron Fox. Spring Grove Cemetery is another amazing place to visit in Cincinnati. It's an arboretum. It's also the final resting place of many of the early pioneers in fire apparatus field.
Spring Grove Cemetery is actually rated as the second most popular tourist attraction for Cincinnati. It's interesting. It's, it's a beautiful place to tour. And as I said, there's an awful lot of history and a lot of famous people buried there. Here's the headstone for the Aarons and Fox families. And all the Aarons and Fox people were buried in a circle around this headstone. Kurt Nepper's also there. I believe Miles Greenwood. And as I said, a lot of people involved with early fire department history. Also, if you're in Cincinnati, try to visit the Eden Park pumping station, which is where Aaron Fox used to test their apparatus. There's still a hole in the, well, several holes in the fence where the hard suctions were dropped through into the water to pump test. The pumping station is in the process now of being made into a mini brewery, but I don't think it's going to open for another year or so. This is a picture of the pumping station at Eden Park. To the left is the fence, kind of buried in the bushes, where the foxes would be pump tested. This is a section of the fence that was around the reservoir, and you can see where it's framed out for the hard suction to go through. At the bottom they had a round section so the suction hose wouldn't get chafed. It's still there, and it's it's just kind of interesting, the history there. If you're in Cincinnati and you have the opportunity, try to visit the Cincinnati River Pumping Station. They give tours there about once a month, but inside they still have four 104-foot-tall triple expansion steam pumping engines. This is a picture of the cylinder block of one of the pumping engines. They're in beautiful condition. They're in a pumping station which goes 85 feet into the ground along the banks of the Ohio River. They run these tours monthly. They have a beautiful website. It's called Cincinnati Triple Steam. And if you go there, they give you a virtual tour of the pumping station and old movies of the pumps running and everything else. Believe me, if you're out there and you have the opportunity, well worth going to see this. I thank you for your time. Take care.